I watched The Lone Wolf last night. Wow, it, it, it caught me very off guard. Very incredible watch. Where did this idea come from? And how do you even begin to make a movie like this? Oh, well, you know, I, I'm from Portugal. It's a small country and we don't have that big of an industry. I mean, we have a few filmmakers that I love, but we don't have a, like a giant industry. So whenever uh, I try to make a film, I try to make it as uh, producible as possible, meaning uh, mm -hmm. I just wanted to write something that I could eventually shoot with a, an iPhone if I had to. So I, I wanted to do something with one actor, one location and one shot. At first, I wasn't even going to use post-production. It was going to be raw, as, as raw as it could be. But then we, we did uh, get some, some production money, and so we were able to build a set and so forth. But mm -hmm. the basic idea was to do something which would not uh, be too complicated to shoot, you know? Uh, your actor, I, I think, flew it out of the park. He he really embodied a lot of these emotions. Um, how did that process of getting him uh, come about? Oh, you know, um, I, I usually work as a musician. It's my, my daytime job, let's say. And uh, I did work as a musician on a play that, that, that we directed. And so uh, I, I've seen a lot of films where, where, where he's the, the main actor and I really love him. And I always wanted to work with with him and uh, it never ceased to amaze me because we did about 36 takes of this uh, and uh, we never never uh, uh, messed up a take because of the actor he knew the text and every single take we had a, a great nuance uh, so it's just like a an incredible racehorse you know like he can deliver and deliver take after take it's insane I love, I love uh, the end. Hearing that you're a musician uh, makes a lot of sense because there's a lot of these pauses uh, that the, the actor does that keeps that pacing in just the right beat. Um, how much of your music uh, career or uh, your experience in music did you bring to the, the table when directing this and getting this to have oh, such a such a slow burn? Yeah. <laughs> well, it did help because, you know, like... Uh, music and film and I, I i do comic books also so they're very similar in in uh, the making you know like having mm -hmm. an idea and then seeing seeing how that idea can become a reality and how how you can play with a, with an audience and make mm -hmm. them feel certain things you know it's just uh, so similar and uh, i did uh, compose the music for the film in advance to set the mood and to to re I really think about music whenever I'm, I'm doing any sort of story, either in graphic novels or in film. Mm -hmm. uh, that there's a lot of directors that don't really think about music until after the, the, the shooting when they're editing or whatever. I kind of like to go on set knowing what it will sound like. Yeah, the, the music definitely helped uh, create that tension. And this is such a such a deep topic. How, how do you even begin to pay like the right amount of reality to this? Because it, it's so deep, it's so dark. Uh, yeah. Why this topic? Why, why was this important? Well, you know, there's a lot of contrast because also like uh, it's also the shorts, it's also a love letter to the late night radio because mm -hmm. I, I, I did hear a lot of late night Portuguese radio, which is very similar. Actually, the, the phone calls in the short are all uh, real phone calls, most well, oh. except for the, that one phone call that kind of moves the action forward. But the other uh, calls are word for word calls that I heard while doing mm -hmm. research at the radio station. As for the, 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 the whole conflict that, uh, and the topic that uh, is addressed in the short, I guess, uh, you know, like, uh, I've been doing 
a lot of stories about uh, characters who are looking for redemption or who are actually trying to fix themselves in some way. You know, that was always like a motif that I that I explored. And for once, I wanted to go uh, with a character that you really couldn't expect any sort of redemption or anything, because you don't really, you can't really read the character. And that's what I hope, at least. Like some people, uh, I can't read them, and they're really scary to me, you know? <laughs> Whenever you can't realize what's beha behind the eyes, you know, it's just mm -hmm. so scary. And I remember talking to this actor and saying, uh, you know, we're trying to figure out if he thinks that he's guilty or not. And he does have an answer, uh, but he never told me. He never told mm -hmm. me if he thought of himself as a, being guilty or not. So it was a fascinating process um, to work with, uh, with the actor, finding a, a character that's so, that has such a dark side, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, I think that's one of my favorite parts about this, the, the mystery at the end where you're not quite sure where this is going. Is there a plan to have a follow-up so we can see more of this? Is, what is your plan now that you, this is done? Oh, well, you know, I just want to keep doing whatever I've been doing, which is films and graphic novels and playing the piano and writing music for film, you know? Uh, it's been a struggle, but nowadays, like I kind of just do this and I just want to keep doing it. So I, I guess the future, I would really like to, to write more and to film more. You, know? you, you have an extraordinary talent, so I hope you continue going on. It, oh, this the, the, this, uh, the, the title, the, the Lone Wolf. Where did that come from? Is, is, is that some homage to something or where, what, what is the meaning behind that? Well, it has many meanings, actually. First of all, it's a very basic meaning because, you know, Victor Lobo, Lobo the word Lobo mm -hmm. uh, is yeah. wolf, right? So it's a very, a very basic connection. So, so I thought, okay, if this guy had a radio show, he's like a, he does have a giant ego, right? So mm -hmm. I would say, okay, he would come up with something like kind of, you know, the lone wolf, you know, like uh, I think it matches the characters like uh, ego, and definitely mm -hmm. I I also imagine the late night saxophone sound with the, the howling wolf. It's just like a very cheesy, but you know, uh, very real. So that's where the name came from. Uh, that because I mean, half until half halfway into the movie. It's kind of like you're you're being led into a kind of a co comedy in a way, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Because it, it is funny. Late night radio, it's very funny and moving, and you you don't expect it to be so dark, you know. Mm -hmm. That's why. But that's the title that came from from this combination of things. Awesome. Uh, well, congratulations on this project. It is spectacular. I can't wait to see what else you, you, you come up with and what you do in the future. Um, thank you very much for your time. And thank you so much also, Jesus. <laughs>